Dragon Ball GT is the continuation of one of the greatest anime of all time. Despite its often considered lackluster performance in terms of story and writing, there's no doubt that in terms of Dragon Ball, it is very unique in its own way. As it predates Dragon Ball Super, the ongoing canon continuation of Dragon Ball Z, the two are often compared in more ways than one. One of the most notable comparisons is how strong is GT Goku exactly? Or more specifically, how strong is he compared to say Dragon Ball Super Goku exactly? Dragon Ball's story begins very, very simple, with Son Goku, a young, energetic boy living alone in the mountains, is discovered by a teenage girl named Bulma, who is searching for the seven mystical Dragon Balls that, when gathered together, can summon a wish-granting dragon. In Z, the story continues with Son Goku now grown up and married to Chi-Chi, with a son named Gohan. The peaceful life is disrupted when Goku's long-lost brother, Raditz, arrives on Earth, and reveals Goku's extraterrestrial origins as a member of the Saiyan warrior race. Raditz kidnaps Gohan, setting off a chain of events that leads to the introduction of even more powerful foes, including the space tyrant, Frieza, the sinister man-made bio-android, Cell, and the legendary evil incarnate, Majin Buu. After the defeat of Kid Buu at the end of Dragon Ball Z, there is a 10-year time skip, with the series concluding with the tournament, where Goku encounters a young fighter named Oob, it was the reincarnation of the evil Kid Buu. Impressed by Oob's potential and seeing the good in him, Goku decides to train him. This encounter sets the stage for the next generation of Dragon Ball heroes, and sort of signifies a passing of the torch from Goku to Oob, if you will. In Dragon Ball GT, the premise revolves around a new adventure that begins when Goku is accidentally transformed back into a child by a wish made on the Black Star Dragon Balls. Even with this significant nerf to Goku, we can easily conclude that in his base form, he actually possesses more power than even characters like Majin Buu, given that General Rildo is said to have power surpassing that of Buu. Whether this statement refers to Buhan or Kid Buu isn't actually important, as both of them demonstrate universal feats by the end of Z. Kid Buu nearly destroyed a planet the size of the universe, while Buhan's power caused the universe to rupture. I delve into their universal capabilities and their potential to destroy universes in the video on screen, so I encourage you to check it out if you're interested. General Rildo is defeated by base GT Goku, who is weaker than his adult form. We can reasonably assume that Rildo is referring to the strongest form of Buu, as it would not make sense otherwise. Goku can further enhance his power beyond that of Buu by tapping into his Super Saiyan forms, with Super Saiyan 3 providing a 400 times power increase. Super Saiyan 4 should be significantly stronger than Super Saiyan 3, and I will provide a well-calculated estimate of its multiplier a bit later. A scan that often raises concerns about this line of scaling comes from the GT Perfect Files, which states that Vegeta's power was on par with Super Saiyan 4, possibly implying a reference to the base transformation strength rather than surpassing Goku or Vegeta, which seems to make a lot more sense, as even in El Manga Legendario, it's actually stated that Goku, at the end of Z, when he first met Oob, was the strongest fighter. This would also include Vegito, as he's actually listed and included in the data book, yet the data book claims he's even superior to that. And even in Daisenshu 4, Toriyama actually states that Goku is the strongest fighter ever, obviously referring to the end of Z, considering Vegito and all that from the Buu Saga. If you were to consider Elder Kai's somewhat ambiguous mention of Beerus that could imply that Goku by the end of Z is simply stronger than Beerus, However, it would be a bit unfair to make that claim, since the concept of Beerus likely didn't even exist when these statements were made, but it's kind of funny to think about. Regarding the main scaling for GT Goku, which would most likely come from Shadow Dragons, Black Smoke God Dragon is stated to be able to destroy the whole universe on multiple occasions. Now, we are actually given specifics of what this is in reference to. For example, as I've gone over in every other Goku-related video, Universe 7 isn't a universe like our own, with just an expansive space of celestial bodies. Universe 7 is a macrocosm containing multiple universe-sized bodies, which are stated by various data books to be infinite in size, many, many times. This macrocosm contains things like heaven, which is the same size as the living world universe, but also planets that are the size of said universe, which applies to practically every body within the macrocosm, with hell being stated larger than even heaven, and the Kaioshin realm being a tenth the size of these infinities. Black Smoke God Dragon is inferior to Omega Shenron, who, with his mere minus energy, was completely destroying the macrocosm, the same way Black Smoke was only by literally existing, as crazy as it may sound. When Omega Shenron's minus energy is traversing the universe, we see that it actually reaches the Kaioshin realm, 
which I've gone over before, is like an outskirt on the macrocosm, meaning that to actually reach it, it would have needed to go through every other universe in the macrocosm to actually reach it. This is kind of similar to what Goku and Beerus did at the start of Super, except this was going to be done with energy that spreaded from Omega. This way of producing energy fits into what is known as the inverse square law, where the energy is squared into relation to its source. And we can actually take a look at the planets that are being destroyed. Instead of a key blast simply blowing it up by surpassing the energy needed for its destruction, we see that the energy overwhelms it and goes beyond what's required to merely destroy it. Meaning that not only is this on a scale of infinity and beyond, but could actually exceed that by a rough margin given how it's being destroyed and all by sin just like existing. This would put him very much into that multiversal ranges of power, very casually just scaling to Omega Shenron. You might even be able to take this a step further if you take those higher dimensional afterlife statements at face value. Although I've said my main concerns with that whole statement in this video on screen, so be sure to check it out. That girl's way too strong! Only a character from an early 80s gag manga could have so much power! What's a gag manga? That's right, going back to the whole end of Z statement in El Manga Legendario, listed in the characters that Goku is stronger than is actually a Raleigh. Now, before you say anything, no, this isn't some cameo that doesn't apply to Dragon Ball whatsoever. Even in things like Kazenshu, we actually see Penguin Island on the Dragon Ball map, which is where the Doctor Slump story takes place. It's also a place you can visit in Dragon Ball Z Kakarot, the game, and it's consistently shown to exist in the same verse as Dragon Ball very clearly. Even pretending to the GT storyline, we see many crossovers between Arale and the GT main trio, which is backed up by the fact that she exists in the Dragon Ball universe. This has a lot of bearing when it comes down to it. Goku being superior to everyone by the end of Z and sort of being the strongest guy around at this point would clearly apply to the gag character Arale and by proxy, GT Goku, as he's just end of Z Goku with a few more years of experience. Remember that ghost Beerus face in that one episode of Super? His name is Dr. Mashirito. He doesn't have any crazy stats himself and heavily relies on his Tomb Force, gag inventions, and hacks resistance. Some of his inventions can even merge pieces of fiction together. This might even be seen as an extraverse created by his machine. But that's up for debate regarding the combination of their worlds as it's really never explained. However, his technology consistently bypasses anything he deems fit, even elements of fiction itself. His robotics ability is so overpowered that when he dies or gets deleted, he literally rebuilds himself. He also created Karma Mater 4, a male version of Arale who befriended her and is her equal. Later on, he actually creates a robot capable of dominating both Arale and Karma Mater 4, but Arale casually blows the robot away because she doesn't like losing, not even joking. And even despite him rebuilding himself from absolutely nothing many times throughout the series, this time he just doesn't come back at all because Arale didn't like him. Except for when he comes back as a ghost in Dragon Ball Super, and Beerus sort of just erases him out of existence, never to be seen again. Also, a quick side note, Cam A also has a cock cannon for whatever reason. It's not really important for the scaling, I just thought it was really funny, but yeah, no, it's there. And not to Senbai's tech, of course he made Arale, but he also created a crockpot that can copy anything put into it. So Arale decides that the most rational thing to do is to wait until he leaves, so he can tear her own manga page and put it in there. This creates an infinite loop of fictional transcendence as she is still within the page, within the page, within the page, within the page, and so on. This might even be a form of hyperversal, which would apply to end of Z Goku and by proxy, GT. But honestly, I'll leave that up for you to decide. And even just going by the typical macrocosm baseline scale to which I provided before the Arale section, so you would probably transcend this entirely, probably getting yourself into that fifth to potentially sixth dimensional ranges casually by literally existing. And this could be taken even further if you think the afterlife is a higher dimensional construct in itself. In the final moments of GT, when Goku keeps fighting Omega, despite all hope being lost and almost dying, he achieves something akin to a mythological concept called transcending in broad daylight. As a result, Goku's changed state becomes a really fascinating thing. This is really the only explanation we have for it, so the rest we kind of have to figure out on our own. For example, after he leaves with Shenron, he seems to be everywhere at once, appearing and disappearing to say goodbye to Krillin, Roshi, Piccolo, and the others. It's not just a matter of using instant transmission either, he literally vanishes into thin air, leaving everybody confused, except for Vegeta and Piccolo, who 
seem to understand this. Then a hundred years later, Goku shows up two more times that we know of, once to see his descendants in the world tournament, and a second time to offer guidance, like a Chinese family spirit. And here's what the author had to say about this enlightened state that Goku was in. To be honest, in GT episode 63, just before the final episode, a big change comes over Goku. Those who watched carefully might not have noticed, but in that episode, Goku, who takes Omega's attack, sinks to the bottom of a deep hole. That is a turning point. Afterward, Goku still continues to battle, but what's different from before is that he's cloaked in an aura that won't let any attack near him. Might be that he died there, or it might be that he became something else entirely. I'll leave that decision to the imaginations of everyone who watched. However, the Goku up to that point that everyone knows clearly does not appear after that. In the world of Dragon Ball, Goku has already died multiple times, and up until then, each time he appeared with a halo over his head. However, I didn't want to go with the usual concept of even when he dies, he comes right back to life. I wanted the viewers to picture death in that way and feel sad as close to reality. So I had a change come over Goku. And then after that, once he defeats Omega and grants the final wish, Goku goes right off with Shenron and the Dragon Ball, so somewhere that people definitely can't get to, while wishing that people will be able to get by out of their own strength in a world without the Dragon Balls, and Vegeta is the only one who notices where he's headed. So no, it's not just some fan theory that he's stronger or just has this feel to his character afterwards, and it's actually described in interviews to be intentional, and he's supposed to be this almost omnipotent character when he defeats Omega and eventually lives with Shenron. And even after this, he's able to tank things like minus energy balls from Omega Shenron without even batting an eye, like it doesn't even affect him or didn't even hit him. Honestly, whether or not this Goku is an omnipotent level, his guaranteed scaling is very powerful and it probably does stack up very well against other fictional verses. I mean, with a few of these statements, who knows, maybe he could beat Super Goku. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments about that. And Another thing I want to point out is a statement made from Toei Animation where they basically said, end quote, After obtaining the pinnacle of Saiyan power, you become Super Saiyan 4. When you draw out the ultimate battle power, not even beings with godly ki can stand in your way. You're able to break through your limits in this form, but you'll have to put up with the extra hair on your body. As a Super Saiyan 4, your Dragon Fist will be your greatest weapon, with an attack potential unlike any other in Dragon Ball history. Even Whis is afraid. The black and red look will always be a powerful warrior, and that's what you are. After controlling the power of the Golden Azaro, your power changed once again. Whilst in this form, you build a lust for battle, but with a pure heart, you'll be able to overcome this. Always remember to keep an eye on that tail, because if you lose it, you may not be able to transform back into Super Saiyan 4, unless you have an Ultra Bloods wave. So let me know what you guys think of this statement. Do you think it holds some bearing, because the Super Anime and GT are both, you know, Toei animation properties, or you think this is just another Invincible Beats Superman Robert Kurtman statement kind of thing? Let me know what you guys think down in the comments, and let me know what video you want to see next, and bye!